Hey, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I just wanted to jump on here really quick and uh, give my opinion about music critics. When I was a teenager, I read a lot of music publications. Um, I read a lot of Rolling Stone, a lot of Spin Magazine, Alternative Press was another one. My dad had subscriptions to everything and so I was always Recording them and reading them, and I read a lot of album reviews. <laughs> and you know, sometimes I agreed with the reviews and sometimes I didn't. Um, I agreed, I would say the most of the time with the Rolling Stone reviews. They give, they have a five star rating system. And one thing I noticed though uh, was the matter-of-factness with which the reviewer would be writing. Um, for example, this is the best song on the album. This is the worst song on the album. I often felt that the reviewer's take on the best song on the album was very often the worst song on the album. And uh, a song that they would write that they didn't like or that was the worst on the album, I often liked the best. <laughs> I remember reading a review for uh, a Madonna album that she put out. I can't remember how long ago it was. The album is Rebel Heart. It's one of my favorite albums by Madonna. It's a great album. And I re the reviewer was writing about a song on the album called Body Shop, saying it was the album's best song. That's the album's worst song. That song sucks, in my opinion. And I was completely baffled as to why they would call that track the best on the album. It made absolutely no sense to me. For some reason, I I still remember the rating that Rolling Stone gave a Peter Gabriel album. Uh, he has this album called Up. It was released in, I believe, 2002. And Rolling Stone gave it two stars. That album is phenomenal. I don't know what the reviewer was thinking. That is a phenomenal album. Criticisms are opinions. They're not facts. We all know that. But oftentimes reviews that that I read were very much presented as fact. And um, that always bothered me. I remember watching one episode of uh, there was this this show on I think it was VH1 a long time ago, many, many years ago. Um, and it was a roundtable discussion of a bunch of music critics, and it was so cringy and so self-aggrandizing. And I think I turned it off after one of the critics said, can I just say something? Can I just say something? Oasis is God. She actually said that. And I turned it off after that. And I, I think the show got canceled like shortly after, um, not surprisingly. <laughs> Over the years, I have heard and read some things, um, mainly from artists, from musicians and from actors especially, um, questioning the validity, uh, the necessity of the deconstruction of art. I don't always agree with movie reviews either. Uh, to take something, to view something or listen to something that a group of people, because we know that no album is made and no movie is made by one single person. It's a group, it's a group effort to, that a group of people put their heart and soul into, their blood, sweat and tears, so to speak, into and reduce it to three stars, you know, this was, this was good, but it wasn't great. I don't know. It just seems kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, as a creative person myself, I have received criticism uh, from scenes I've performed, things I've written, and if it's constructive, um, it's fine. 
it's never bothered me. But if it's just mean spirited or lazy, then again, you just kind of question the necessity of that. On the other hand, I wonder if, you know, let's say a big budget movie that was made solely for profit, um, where nobody really put any real effort into it, everything was done kind of half-heartedly. You know, like a big action movie with shitty CGI um, and bad acting and bad writing <laughs> and a disjointed story um, where everyone probably knows it's a bad movie and the people who made the movie probably know that it's a bad movie. It's just kind of accepted as that, but also, like I said, it's something that was meant only to make money. Uh, I've never heard anybody come out uh, from one of those movies f from bad criti critics and say, you know, I really put my heart and soul into this and it got ripped apart and I'm really hurt by that. It just, it just doesn't happen. And you could, you could also apply that to music too, you know, a, a, a pop act that, um, again, exists only to make a profit and the music is just kind of just lame, glossy, generic pop and it's, you know, the image is very forced and stylized. Um, I've never heard anybody from one of those pop groups come out and say, you know, I put my, my heart and soul into this song uh, and it's getting ripped apart. <laughs> Although you also don't want to deny the work that is involved in creating even a bad movie or creating um, a generic, boring pop album. There is still work involved in that. There is, you know, there's, there's still going to be long nights involved in that. And, and a lot of hustling and a lot of, uh, you know, nonstop promoting and touring. That all takes work, that all takes effort. So now that VH1 and MTV are no longer really music channels and people aren't really reading magazines anymore that much, well, I mean, I guess they still are, but not nearly as much as they were, you know, back when I was reading them, like in the 90s. Perhaps music criticism is not as pertinent as it once was. I honestly can't even remember the last time I read a review of somebody's album or somebody's song. I think a lot of us turn to um, reviews by consumers, right? Because we buy a lot of things online now. And so before we buy something, oftentimes we will go to the reviews. Um, and people, you know, that comes with its own challenges because people tend to resort to absolutes and also extremes where you'll you'll read something like this is the worst thing ever but there's no explanation as to why it's the worst thing ever <laughs> or this is the greatest thing this is the greatest thing ever but then there's no actual context for that either so it gets kind of uh it can it can be kind of a rough terrain <laughs> I remember Rolling Stone gave a five star, that's the highest rating that they that they give. Five stars is classic. Four stars is I think excellent and then five stars is classic. They gave that rating to an REM album called Automatic for the People and that's a very good album. I own that album. Um, it's, it is. It's a really, it's a really good solid album. Is it five star worthy? Is it, is it a classic? I don't think so. Um, it There are a couple songs off that album that have endured. Um, Everybody Hurts is one of them. And then there was another track on there called Man on the Moon, which was, it was used in movies a lot. And um, I, I think most people would, would recognize it if they heard it. But I don't, I don't think that album was particularly um, 
influential. Uh, you know, as far as the other songs, it's, again, it's a good album. I don't think it's, it's a classic album. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of my rambling for today. Um, the bottom line is I don't rely on reviews um, before reviewing a movie or listening to an album. I will rely on reviews before buying a pair of pants online or buying a vacuum cleaner, <laughs> but that's about it. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, more top top. Blah, 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 blah. Thanks for sticking around. More top five videos will be coming up soon. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please comment below, and I will see you guys very soon.